What's happening, my creatures of the night? Good to see each and every one of you again. Today, I'm going to have quite a bit of fun. Got this pimple on my cheek that I can't get rid of. Um, yeah, today I'm going to have a bit of fun and uh, do something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while. Uh, this is my personal top 10 Metallica songs of all time. For those of you who don't know, I'm quite the big Metallica fan. Always have been, always will be. Um, geez, it's really bad. Okay, so uh, we're going to kick things off here. Um, number 10 is uh, Welcome Home, uh, also known as Sanitarium. This song came out in uh, 1986, I believe, off the Master of Puppets album, and uh, which in general has a fantastic lineup of songs. Uh, it's a very enraging song, and it's uh, one of their more angry melodies. But it's angry and complex at the same time. The lyricism really depicts a man who is wrongly institutionalized in some kind of mental health facility of some sort. And you really feel the anger that the protagonist feels through this song. It's a fine mix of hard and heavy as well as soft and a bit more emotional as well. Um, but that emotional uh, breakdown kind of, uh, it really builds up to the hard and heavy chorus in a really awesome way. Um, number nine is uh, One. One is a great song, probably one of their more well-known tracks. Uh, a lot of popularity came from Guitar Hero, or if you're a Metallica fan, you'll definitely know this song. Um, this song is able to tell more of a story. Um, it's not as angry as most songs off uh, albums such as Ride the Lightning, Kill Em All, and Master of Puppets. Uh, and Justice for All is generally deeper than Metallica's previous work prior to this album, with an exception of a few songs here and there. Um, this song is one of their more progressive songs as well. Uh, the background of the song is very war-themed, but it mostly gets into the after-effects of uh, being in war. The song also incorporates multiple different guitar riffs and more complex solos within one song, which is mostly what they were going for when they did this album. Uh, speaking of... Uh, more complex riffs within one song. Uh, number eight is uh, Master of Puppets. This song shouldn't be a surprise. A lot of people describe this as being one of the top Metallica songs and is definitely a song that should be on a top ten, any top ten Metallica song list. I personally like this song because it has a very rough against the edge uh, guitar riff, which also changes quite a bit throughout the song. Um, it once again has that angry feel to it, which is kind of what Master of Puppets went for, essentially, um, with, a, with an exception of some areas. Uh, this song, all around, is an angry track. Even, um, it's an angry track. Even the breakdown, where things uh, slow down a bit through the song, is quite awesome. It has a really hard and angry build-up back into the uh, heavier melodies, and, uh, once again, there really just isn't anything bad to say about this song. It's it's fantastic. Number seven is uh, The Day That Never Comes. Um, after Saint Anger, uh, fans were obviously quite disappointed with uh, Metallica. They felt that the album was uh, not Metallica's best effort put together. Um, however, years later, uh, I think 2008, uh, Death Magnetic came out as the follow-up. And uh, though it was overlooked by many of uh, fans because of uh, Saint Anger and how how much negativity it got, it had some pretty good tracks on it. They were really able to produce a much better old school feel of an album with a lot of uh, their roots of thrash added into the mix, which is something that we hadn't heard in quite a long time from Metallica. This song specifically is one of my favorites off the album. Uh, mainly just because it's an angry track and has a really good guitar solo, uh, which St. Anger really lacked. Um, number six is uh, Dyer's Eve. This song is another song off And Justice For All, which once again was Metallica 
at their highest and greatest point, in my opinion. Um, this song off the album has to be one of the angriest Metallica songs I've ever heard. But at the same time, it has that mix of depth and complexity, uh, which is mainly why I think the song turned out so well. Um, the song got really personal and emotional, and it really brought out the absolute best in uh, James Hetfield, uh, lead singer, frontman, for those who don't know. Especially with his songwriting ability, all in all, this song is amazing, and I strongly recommend it for uh, those looking to get into the band, um, or more into the band. Number five is another one that most fans will know. Um, for Whom the Bell Tolls, uh, this song is off the album Ride the Lightning, which is one of my favorite albums by them, next to Justice for All. Uh, this is a Metallica song, once again, majority of fans will know by heart. It has the ability to really get your heart racing and the, the hairs on your arms standing up and all that. Uh, the song is awesome. Uh, it has this awesome intro that goes on for about two to two and a half minutes before the vocals even start, which is... It's, it's an extremely exciting uh, medium-paced track. It's really aggressive, hard, and heavy, but it's shown without adding that really fast tempo or without adding so much speed. Um, which is obviously pretty awesome. Uh, I think a lot of credit on this song goes to uh, the late Cliff Burton, um, who was Metallica's bassist before tragically passing away. Um, the song shows off some of the most dominating bass lines throughout the song, especially in the, in especially in the intro. Um, in general, I love the song, and the live recordings of the song are even better. Seattle 89 is probably one of my favorites. Um, number four is, uh, Fade to Black. This song is also off, uh, Ride the Lightning. I think it's really one of the first songs to show that Metallica is really more than just a typical thrash metal band. This song was one of Metallica's first, uh, ballad-like songs. Um, although there are some heavier areas in the track, um, it is really one of Metallica's first tracks to really get down and deep, and uh, one of the first to add that element of sadness and emotion to their music. Uh, many argue that Nothing Else Matters was the first one to do that, but this song, in my opinion, beats Nothing Else Matters by far. The story in the song is quite depressing, uh, which goes well with the more emotional guitar melodies and whatnot. Uh, that mixes very well together it mixes very well together to add that emotional feel, uh, which I find in in what I find interesting is that uh, James Hetfield doesn't really sing in a way that is melodic or of any sort, and uh, but his voice is able to sound really fitting to the music, and it really doesn't sound forced. It, this whole song has a natural sound; it has a natural emotion to it. Um, Number three is uh, Ride the Lightning, not the album, uh, the song, Ride the Lightning. Uh, the song is titled off, titled off the album and uh, pretty much describes the story that's shown on the album cover in uh, some ways. The song has various tempo changes and changes in guitar riffs and is structured very well. It's truly a headbanger's track and once again has that angry aggressive sound. And the lyrics contribute to making it an angry track, uh, describing how the protagonist is waiting to be executed on the electric chair, as the electric chair is shown on the album cover. And uh, this protagonist royally hates the justice system, and uh, this song really puts us in the shoes of the protagonist and is really convincing with it. Um, with, I, I want to point out that with Metallica, the lyrics sometimes aren't that complex, uh, or hard to understand, but they're still able to have good meaning despite being so straightforward. Uh, the song is awesome, and it's another song that I highly recommend and personally love. Um, number two is uh, Orion. This is a track off Master of Puppets, and is actually a fully instrumental composition. 
This, in my opinion, is one of Metallica's greatest accomplishments. Creating this song, uh, it shows off Metallica's ability not just to use vocals and lyrics to tell a story, but to tell some sort of story and uh, bring out emotion with uh, instrumentation. It has various guitar progressions and changes within one song, which definitely keeps the, li the listener interested in the track. Uh, being an instrumental musician, I think keeping the listener interested is, is very important when you are composing instrumental music. Uh, in no way does this song get too re too repetitive. Uh, not to mention, it's aggressive. It, like it's thrash, man. Uh, it's something that would get the whole crowd banging their heads. It also gives the Master of Puppets album uh, some variety, making it more exciting. Uh, not every song has has the exact same sound and the exact same feel, which is something that I think is essential in making any good album. The instrumentation in the song is brilliant, and it really fills in for the vocals, which is super awesome. I love this track, man. Uh, there are multiple, there are also multiple guitar solos in the song as well. Um, also, Cliff Burton's bass solo, which is when the song really slows down a bit, but eventually builds back up to that faster pace that they started with. Um, Many people bash Lars Ulrich on uh, the drums, uh, but at the time, uh, at this particular time in the 80s, uh, Lars still had some really powerful, aggressive drumming on majority of Metallica's tracks, and you can really hear you can really hear it. Although uh, I kind of wish there was a drum solo in the track, uh, I'm still glad. Uh, I'm still happy with how the drums turned out on this specific track. Once again, I'm really glad I'm really glad Metallica created this song. It's it's fantastic. And uh number 1 is uh, Harvester of Sorrow. Despite the criticism this album gets, uh once again, And Justice for All is one of my favorite Metallica albums and I personally view it as Metallica's highest point on the mountain. This album showed Metallica's skill in songwriting, instrumentation, progression as well as emotion and storytelling at its absolute greatest. This song really showed an evolution in Metallica's music though. Uh, it brings out more of a doom metal feel to it, and I personally think Metallica really should have gone toward, more towards this approach after this album. Uh, this song has also has one of Lars Ulrich's best drumming perform- uh, it also has one of Lars Ulrich's best drumming performances I have heard yet. Sorry if I uh, got a bit of a tongue twister there. The uh, intro to this song is amazing, as the guitar and drums are able to harmonize very well together. Not to mention, uh, the song really shows James Hetfield giving it all he can with his uh, vocals. Uh, which is something we don't hear too much of uh, after this album, and the Black Album, even. Uh. This song is quite dark and somewhat melodic and haunting as well. I mean, uh, the song depicts... It, tr it truly, I think, depicts Metallica giving 110% into what they are doing. And uh, I've always enjoyed this song. Even the live performances of this song will gr get the crowd super excited. Super excited. It is a, uh, it's a very enjoyable track, and uh, once again, it's a song I highly recommend. Well, that concludes my top 10 Metallica songs of all time. Obviously, there are many more Metallica songs I enjoy, but I, these, th these 10 songs are really the ones that uh, do it for me when I'm listening to Metallica. It's, uh, they're fantastic, and um, once again, I'm a huge Metallica fan. Um, might be doing uh, Metallica album reviews in the future. I know a lot of uh, album reviewers have done Metallica albums, but I think it would be really cool if I did it if I did it as well, because Metallica is a band I'm really into, and uh, I wouldn't mind doing uh, reviews on majority of their albums. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I haven't done a top ten in quite a while, uh, aside from that uh, worst songs of 2015. Uh, thank you guys for your feedback on that. And um, thank you, Creatures of the Night, for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video, and uh, 
You can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I do want to interact with my fellow creatures, and uh, I'll be doing that through Twitter. Uh, once again, I have a live stream coming up soon. Uh, I'll post a video announcing when exactly it is. And uh, yeah, that, uh, feel free to comment any album review requests or top 10 requests you like and whatnot. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching.